Okay, we saw two examples of how we found relative extrema functions by finding partial derivatives, finding critical points, checking the critical points, and trying to do analysis like is it a local minimum, local maximum. Let's do one more example. Find relative extrema of f of x, y equal to y square minus x square. Now we have seen this function when we did the quadric surfaces. This is the saddle surface. Um, partial derivative with respect to x is negative two x with respect to y to y. Both of them are zero. Can only happen when x y is zero zero. How can we figure out if zero zero is a local min or max? Actually, I've drawn the graph here. You can see that zero at zero zero is neither a local min or max because if you, here, one here's the way to see it. You are standing at zero zero. Here's the x. Here's y. If you move on positive x-axis, you make this whole thing negative. At zero zero, your value is zero, right? So yes, at zero zero, your height is zero. Move positive axis, you go negative. Move positive y-axis or your negative y-axis, you go positive. So means no matter how small a circle you draw around zero zero, some values are below the height of zero zero and some values above. That means this guy can never be a local min or max. And you can see that in the picture. You go this way, you go up. You go this way, you go down. Okay. Now, <clears throat> one thing. You have been noticing that in these three examples we have done, we have had to do some careful algebra to see is the min, max, neither. There is something called second partials test that will help us sometimes, which says that let f of x, uh, the partial derivatives be zero, meaning it's a critical point, a b is a critical point of f, and let f have continuous second partial derivatives on an open region containing a b, like a little open region containing a b. All the part second partial derivatives, which is f x x, f y x, f x y, f y y. If they are continuous, then let me. I'm not finished writing the test. Let's write it over here. Then you define this quantity d. So here's the what the test says. Number one, if d is bigger than zero and f x x, if a b is bigger than zero, then f has a relative minimum at a b. So you compute this quantity at the point AB. If that quantity is positive and FX, FXX at AB is positive, then F has a relative minimum. Then under this condition, it has a relative maximum. If D is negative, it's a seven point D zero test inconclusive. Then you have to go back to the algebra, kind of the algebra we are doing to check is the minimum, maximum, or seven point. So this test can help you sometimes cut down the amount of work you have to do to check each relative, uh, each critical point for its relative minimum, maximum. But sometimes this test will not be useful. 
So you should now look at some examples in the book that follow this material, set in partial sets in the same section 13.8, to see how this test is used. And also look at the example on how we find absolute values over absolute uh, minimum and maximum over a closed bounded region. With that, we conclude section 13.8 on extrema of functions of two variables. Three variables that work similarly, although the, the second partial test is going to be different for that. Okay, that finishes our section 13.8.